San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV, Big Data Week, Strata Hadoop. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host in this segment is Jeff Frick, and we have two exciting guests, Angela Gill, Strategic Business Development Manager at Intel, and Elizabeth Land, Marketing Consultant. Welcome to the Cube. Thanks for having us. I, Absolutely. Coincidentally, it's Women in Tech Wednesday on the SiliconAngle.tv, so uh, great to see you. So one, I just want to quickly get, let you guys put a quick plug out. You have an event today, a luncheon, uh, Women we, in Big Data. Share the, the coordinates, the URL, and what the event is. Yeah, we sure do. So um, our luncheon today is a luncheon meetup, and we have featured speakers from VMware, SAS, and Stanford. We've got 170 folks coming over, women and their allies, coming to get together to you know, to have professional development and network um, at the at the conference. Um, awesome. and, the, and the agenda is just to kind of shoot the breeze. Is there any presentations? Yes, or? we have three speakers with presentations from those companies, VMware, SAS, and Stanford. And then uh, we get together and we talk about what we learned at the presentation. We'll give after. the details, make sure they got it, because it's coming up right now. So where? Yeah, well, if you look on the Meetup, if you look on the Meetup site, okay. um, if you're a part of Meetup, All you right. can uh, get Want to make sure they get there. Look for the you know, women in big data. Is okay, the, women in big data. That's the search term. So, so talk about the dynamics, because one of the things we're proud of is we cover a lot of, we've done a lot of interviews, we've done over 8,000 uh, videos up on YouTube. I think we have over 4,000 CUBE interviews over, over the past six years. We're in our seventh season of the CUBE. And, and it's, there are a lot of, plenty of great tech athletes, women out there doing great stuff. And the world's changing. It's not just hardcore coding. There's a lot of other disciplines that are attracting the creativity and the, the, the value of an in integrated kind of workforce. And it's not just the political thing. It's just the reality. I mean, I mean, Facebook says the numbers are more women than men. So there's a tech culture now that's completely native to everybody. So it's not just a man thing anymore. So what are you guys seeing in the dynamics today? What's the update from your perspective, Angela? Well, I think we've still got a ways to go, right? <laughs> so if you know, uh, our CEO from Intel, BK, uh, made a pledge that we wanted to be at parity by 2020 and a $300 million investment to do that. And so we've been trying to hire as many women as we can into our big data fields. And that's why we brought this uh, Women in Big Data Forum to the forefront, because we want to make sure that women are um, networking, we're connecting, we're inspiring, they're, we're growing them, we're championing them championing them, and so we want them to be a part of the forum and uh, also to bring them into these technology companies. So specifically, just to add on to that, actually the numbers are working against us. So we have fewer women graduating in technical degrees than we did in the 1980s. So that creates a pipeline problem. So p companies like Intel and all of our other sponsor companies for women in big data in the, in the big data space are having a harder time recruiting Absolutely. at parity with men. So one of the things we found when we were doing the Grace Hopper Women in, in celebra uh, Tech Celebration was we noticed that this pipelining is also uh, career switches. We talked to a number of women who jumped into, say, either computer science or a tech field from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Else they vectored back in, so some in migration there. Mm -hmm. But also uh, Eileen Fagan at Quicken uh, was on the Cube, and she brought up something that was really fascinating to me, which is, and she's our age, so she's you know seen she's at the top of the pyramid and executive, and she's seen that there's really a shortage of of mentoring at the top too. So and that the mentoring component is a huge deal. I know that has to do with a lot of your network. And it's not just mentoring, it's actually sponsorships. That's one of the big deals. We've had um, heads of companies come in to talk to the group and they said the call to action for them is don't just mentor a woman, but sponsor her through up her career you know, navigation up the ranks. So how do you delineate the two? What are kind of the important things that, that go from mentorship to sponsorship, you know, the, some good actions that people can, can write down and try to do a better job. Yeah, I think when I think of mentorship, you're looking at someone ha that has the skill set that you may not have that you're trying to achieve or uh, working in an area that you want to learn more about. And so you can kind of use them as a coach or mimic some of the things that they're doing. But when you get into sponsorship, it's more um, having people who are in positions of power who can actually make decisions and bring people into their organizations and uh, hire and, and actually champion them to 
get a position, whereas mentoring is yeah. kind of helping and steering along and providing guidance more so. You know, there's a lot of folks out there and, and that I talk to that are really passionate like we are. I mean, I, Jeff and I both have daughters, and you know, we have this conversation, so I kind of do the anecdotal, little unscientific survey to ask questions and try to observe, you know, because um, my, my daughters are geeky, they're very science-oriented, cool. and they, they're actually straying away from uh, the field and I, I try to kind of probe them and there's a, a vibe if you will out there So I'm trying to understand what you guys have found and I'm as well I'm trying to understand is, is how to talk to young women uh, About that. It's okay Or how do you get them in a position to at least get a feel for it? Rather than the, the natural reaction might be to stray away and, and I say no no It's good you can be a you know computer science is so cool Well dad, you know, I'm gonna be pre-med or they go to something safe so I, I think it's like a how do you talk well, to young cool. women? What do you guys have seen? I mean, I'd love to know. It's role models, I think. And we, as uh, the Women in Big Data group, has does some mentorship. We go into high schools and mentor high school kids and show them that there's that this is an opportunity. If they see a strong female, they can say, hey, I can be like you. It's a quick touch. So. And, and, and it's seeing more people in the, the industry, right, who are doing what you want to do. And so I think the more that we can bring women into the engineering field and they get a chance to see people working in that area, then they kind of aspire to be that. And not turning them off at a very young age, right, where they're like, okay, I can't do it that fear factor. So a lot of programs that kind of start very early on in elementary school where they haven't been turned off or been told, you know, it's not the right thing to do, I think is where you also have to start. The girls who code. Girls that who whole code. Girls who code is phenomenal. Right. That's great. Yeah, so, when, you know, again, I'm trying to learn to be a good father because I'm trying to, you know, I, I want to get the, the girls in a position to at least sample and make their own choices rather than being scared away. Yeah, yeah. so, Angie, I want to follow up with you because we, we actually talked to Kim Stevenson and she talked about BK and that, and that real commitment and, and really to set the goal, which is, you know, if you don't measure it and set a goal, you're never going to get there. So what are some of the things that that investment is going towards at Intel specifically to move the ball down the field? Well, so a lot of it is going into our own hiring and retention. So a uh, couple of things that we're doing, um, we're going into the high schools in terms of a pipeline. So we've uh, adopted a couple of high schools, especially in the Oakland area. We're mentoring there. Um, and then the recruitment effort at Intel has been really ratcheted up. So we've got a number of events where we target and bring um, underrepresented minorities into uh, Intel to actually take on positions. So um, we're doing a... a Quite a bit, and I think um, since the year that the uh, pledge was announced, uh, they've put out some new data where we are making progress to some of those goals. So it's, the goal is to be at parity, right, with, with what's coming out of the university. So if uh, universities are graduating 13% women, then we want to see that in our market at Intel and in the employee base. I think the current, so. the current stat's 18 to 20% women. 18 to 20, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and a shout out to Anita Borg organization that puts out on the Grace Hopper celebration. You know, they have an internal survey that companies can take uh, and score themselves against an index that they've established, and, and they have an award for it uh, for companies of vision. But what's nice is even if you don't win the award, again, at least if you're taking the steps, you know, you've got concrete, discrete things you can measure, you get a baseline, you can see if you're making, uh, making progress against it, which is very, very important. Awesome. Um, the other thing I think it's important for people to remember, it's, it's not just because it feels good and it's the right thing to do, but you actually get better business outcomes. Absolutely. When you have diversity of opinions, different points of view, different ways to approach a problem. Higher profits. Um, yes. Higher profits. <laughs> So what are some of the other things that your group specifically is doing? Is it yeah. the meetups or there's some other sure. kind of activities yeah, people should we know have about? A, a robust training calendar. So we, we just got together at Cloudera in February and had 45 women train up on all things Hadoop. Um, and then we, we'll come up, we, we have a calendar of going forward of, um, we took a survey of what topics the women want to see most and learn up, uh, um, get spun up on. Then we have meetups where we actually listen to speakers and hear their point of view, their individual point of view and the company's perspectives that they, they bring. And then networking. I think we all know that professional, net, professional development is highly correlated with how strong your network is. And so we do a lot of that. And in, in addition, the mentoring that I spoke of, yeah, we mentor down, but we're also gonna be building some additional um, programs, men, peer mentoring. So the vibe of the show here, share with the folks, you've got hundreds of people coming to your event this luncheon. What, from the show perspective, can you share some insight into what you're seeing? I mean, whether, you know, women representation, also just trends that you guys like. 
Well, we're seeing. So uh, it's early yet, but um, I know a lot is being focused on uh, analytics, right? So um, we want to see women in the analytics field. We're trying to broaden uh, what we mean by big data, right? So it's not just Hadoop, but it's, you know, what we're doing in the IoT space, what we're doing in machine learning, um, what we're doing as far as uh, additional analytics are concerned and uh, data science. So we want to make sure that we have a broader umbrella, and I think I'm seeing that um, in the conference so There's far. There's a lot of geek areas that, that people can really get their, 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 their arms around because you have, it's an art and science around the data science we're seeing. You're seeing mm -hmm. the UI is huge, user inter experience, visualization, yeah. simplification, more elegant than you're seeing the hardcore maths. You have a range of skill sets sets now in this world. Yeah. So we I have think security it's a, coming in, where does security play in the whole thing? And uh, It seems to be a ripe area. Yes, it is. Well, we'll have to bring the on the ground uh, production <laughs> to, to one of the meetups and, and, and yeah, get that'd some be interviews. Fun. That'd be fun. And, and again, just for everybody, we, we're going back to Grace Hopper. We went last year, awesome. the year before. It was a fantastic event. It's in Houston, I think in October. Check it out if you don't. October 19th, thank you. The Grace Hopper Celebration of Women Computing. Not only a cool conference, but the best name of any conference. We're also going to go to the Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference in Phoenix uh, for the first time April 19th, and check that out. Um, we've had uh, you know, the, the Girls Who Code, so, so much good things to do. So before yeah. we let you, you go, just give a straight out plug. Where do people go? Oh, What's sure. the URL? How do they find more? What do they need to do to help you guys yes. out? Yes, uh, go to womeninbigdata.org for more information. Also, our LinkedIn is Women in Big Data Forum, and they can meet us at the Hilton in Almaden One Room today. Right now, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll let you go. Meetup. This is real time data in flight. <laughs> They're flying off to their event. Thanks for the sharing. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. We really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back with more live coverage in Silicon Valley after this short break.